salvation forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Idaho team. And those of you who are going to be serving communion at the end of the message, we'll be having our communion time. So you can look at this as uh, a few minutes of preparation for that. You know, some of you, <clears throat> well, a good portion of you remember who this is, but that there's some people you might have to lean over and explain what a checkbook is. But, um, but you know, reconciling your checkbook with, with the bank used to be a big deal <laughs> of personal finance. You know, they'd, they'd send you your statement, and you'd write that stuff down, and you're like, what in the world happened? You know, there is more month than there is money. You know, and, and you're trying to figure that out, and you're wanting to be in agreement. You're wanting to be reconciled with the bank, because if you're not reconciled with the bank, they have that way of <clears throat> charging you extra money. You know, I remember that one time, this is not a part of my notes, but I came home for lunch during, during work, and, and my dear wife, who'd been married to me for about a year, about a year, a year and a half, maybe, two years, maybe, at this point, said, um, we're overdrawn at the bank. And I'm like, how could we be overdrawn at the bank? And, uh, you know, so we're looking through this bank statement. I said, oh, okay, that's, that's fine. We'll, we'll just go down and take care of it. And she said, wise woman that she is, with what? You know, some of you remember back then when you, you didn't have anything extra. Whatever the bank had was, was all you had. And you realized, <laughs> I was estranged from my bank. <laughs> we were not reconciled because what they said we had spent or we had tried to spend, they didn't say we had. And, uh, you know, that was some of my early banking instructions. And some of you know what that's like. But... you know you can be overdrawn with God? The Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that our account shows deficit apart from the work of Jesus Christ, and that he seeks to reconcile us to him. And all who believe in him find grace. But we're not trying to earn his favor, we're receiving what he's provided. So turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to look at what he's provided for us today as we continue in this series talking about following Jesus. And this Sunday we'll be looking at following Jesus in reconciliation. It, it is one thing to say yes to Jesus, okay? I said that a long time ago. <laughs> but there's been a whole bunch of choices that we had to continue to make to continue following Jesus. It, you know, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing to say, hey, you know, my spouse said yes to me, and I have <laughs> drug her through various countries and situations around the world. The following requires a continual choosing. He has chosen us, but we must continue to choose him. So in 2 Corinthians 5, it, it shows us some of the things that he has done, and this is perhaps one, one of the most amazing texts of the Bible. So I should be done by about two. But uh, some of you think that's funny, but we anyway, want later. But anyway, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. And as though God were making an appeal to us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For he made him 
who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. What, what a marvelous thing that he has done for, for, for us. And those who walk with their faith in him will walk differently with man and with God. He says so, therefore. And you guys know when you look in your Bible and you see a therefore, say, hey, where's that pointing back to? And it could be verse 16, but 16 is actually pointing back to verses 14 and 15. So if you look with me over there, it says the love of God, the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all. So that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. That is amazing to think about. That he died for me, he rose again. He says, now, now live for him. That is what we call the great exchange. We're going to be talking about that this morning. That he exchanged his life for mine. He exchanged his life for yours. And he has made you a new creature. He is our creator. It says over there in Colossians, that, that through him all things were made. Nothing was made that was made in John 1. Without him, he's the one who is doing this. If your faith is in Christ, he's doing a work in you but he's already done a work in you. So, so there is that which he is yet fulfilling and that which has already begun to be. And so he's in this process of making you who he's already made you. Does that make any sense at all? Not at all. But, but that idea is, hey, you, you've made your bread. You put it in the oven. What's it doing? Are you, are you making it? No. It, it's made, but it's continuing to mature. It's continuing to develop. It's, it's continuing to become what he intends for us to be. So, that, so that's what we, we do with food oftentimes. But if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. So, so speak that word to your neighbor. They might need a bit of encouragement this morning. All right? If you're in Christ, you're a new creation. T tell them. Th that person needs to hear it. Listen. In Christ, God makes something new. It is not something that's existed before. This is not talking about turning over a new leaf. He has given you a new life. All right, and so, so, so he is doing something. He says, is, not, not shall be, he is a new creation. And the old passed away. When we say that, some of you look around and, you know what? Some of you are looking older than you did last week. <laughs> and, and some things haven't passed away. Some things are passing away. You know, your, your glasses are talking to you. Your joints are talking to you. They're all saying, hey, there's a resurrection coming. That's, that's what they're saying. But, but. But your previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away because we were condemned without Christ. We were lost. We were forever gone. He says that condition is forever gone now. You, you now stand in a new relationship, all right? And so behold, the new has come. Not just a new man, but, but a new person that dwells within you. Galatians 2.20 says what? I have been but crucified with Christ. Yet, not I, but Christ lives where? In me. And he died. He lives in me. So the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Well, again, we see that incredible exchange that he's talking about there. So if you're following in notes, 
Here's this principle. That God gives every creation in Christ uh, his reconciliation ministry. Look at the 18th verse again. It says, now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given you a ministry. And so often when we think about ministry, we think about, about our spiritual gifts. And that's, a, that's an amazing thing because God has wired you uniquely to contribute to the body. But that's not what he's talking about here. What he's talking about here is his I have placed you in this world, in the family that you're in, in the neighborhood that you're at, that you would be a person who's ministering, who's serving up, what, the gospel. That you would be a person who's providing the message of truth, that there is a reconciliation available with God. Does our world need to hear that? We have a world who's mad at God, (laughs) but... Understand this, God has plans for you, and so he has given you a new identity. He has given you a new purpose, all right? The pain and the problems, <laughs> they're part of his plan. But he has his plan. All these things, everything he has done in Christ, okay, are from him. We live in a world that, that, that doesn't see what he's doing, but he reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us this ministry. So he does, as we trust him, he works in us to accomplish his will. So if you're not yet in Christ, I, I want to give you a positive word this morning, is you can be reconciled to God. I, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you stand. I don't know what your view of you is, but the view of Scripture is, is you can be reconciled to God. You can be at rightness with God. He can give you that very justification that comes. If you're in Christ, then you are reconciled to God. That God has already balanced the books, all right? And so he says, he reconciled us. To himself. It doesn't say he will, that someday, somehow, you're going to perform well enough that God will say, close enough, you can come in. That's not how it works, friends. Because you are bankrupt and overdrawn. Right? You have nothing to contribute to your own well-being spiritually, and he reconciled you to himself. And so from that spot, what? Through Christ. It is through Christ. Say it with me. Through Christ. There is so much confusion in this world because religion has man oftentimes performing to appease an angry God. But you read your Bible, and we're going to see it here in just a moment. He's not counting the trespasses against it. He's already poured out his wrath upon that cross. He has punished sin. He, he's reconciled us to himself. So he's the one who's at peace with us, but we, like a seventh grader, I don't care. I'm still mad about it. We're we're pouting. God hasn't worked the way we wanted him to work. God hasn't done what we wanted, and people are mad at God. But he reconciles sinners into his family as sons. Isn't that an amazing combination? That God brings us in and he makes us the part of this plan that, that we can walk this out with him. We were what? We were the rebels from the garden. We chose our own way. We earned death. But in Christ, there is forgiveness. We're welcomed into his family. He works the change. He gives the purpose. It says he gave us this ministry. I want to tell you something. God has entrusted believers the good news that lets people around you know reconciliation with God is available. Don't assume. Don't assume that people have heard that. People are living in such a way they know, you, you know they don't know, but you don't know what they don't know. Are you with me yet? Or are you lost? I turned a corner there. 
sharing with a friend of mine who'd spent an awful lot of his life <clears throat> angry at pretty much everybody. I can, I can still remember the first time I came over to see him. And, and um, <clears throat> he says, if you start preaching Christ, he says, I'm going to black your eye and throw you out of here. And he only weighed about three times that I did. And I'm, I'd already been told almost verbatim that from his closest friend. He said, be careful. You know, and you're, you're praying, I'm here to give him good news, and he wants to punch me in the face. And yeah, I just, in those spot situations, God puts you in. You're just like, okay, Lord, what are you saying next? And he gives me creative things. He does. And so I said, if you think I'm going to preach in this trailer, you've got another thing coming. He says, you're going to have to come to church if you want to hear me preach. And he laughs, so we sit down and talk, and I share Jesus with him. We share this testimony of Christ with him. We share this good news with him. And he told me <coughs> that day how many times he'd, well, not how many times, but several times, that he had spent a night in the Gray Bar Hotel from punching people in the face, you know, from, from being that angry person. But he would not receive it. There's a message we have that brings hope to people that haven't yet received it. I was with him in the hospital. He was going in to have some cancer removed. It does sober you a little bit when you're in that place. He still didn't want to hear. I said, could I just share one verse of scripture with you? Okay. You could feel the, the warmth and the acceptance of truth just radiating out from him. And I, I, I'm there, and I just, for God so loved the world that he gave who his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And in front of me was an angry person, 55 years of age. He says, I've never heard that verse before. Don't assume that people know that God loves them, that God was reconciled, that God has paid it. There's an awful lot of signs, even at football games, all sorts of things that people have done. Don't assume that anybody's heard anything. He made you a minister, and he gave you this ministry. He says, reconciliation with God is available. You are assigned. You are on a mission from God. He has a work to do for you. He has a work to do in you, and then he does a work through you. And as we present ourselves to him, he does that work. All right? We, we saw the video of our team in, in the Philippines, and it was exciting seeing them baptizing there. Sunrise baptism, what that was. And, and Jared was just, just mentioning that People that you have sown the seed with, you don't know when they're coming. It's not your business to know. There's somebody who's the Lord of the harvest, amen? And so, so we sow the seed, and we believe he will bring the harvest. So we're going to do this reconciliation work because he has called us to it, not because of what we see, but because of what he said. Oh, man. Over 40 years of preaching this thing, and, and it cannot be why what you see. It's what he said. Am I going to be obedient to what he said? All right. Verse 19. It says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he's committed to us the word of reconciliation. God was in Christ, upon that cross, God was there reconciling. He was doing this work to bring the possibility of us approaching God. Because what did we face? Damnation. We had earned something, and it was coming, all right? The, the curse has already happened, and yet he was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God's done this amazing thing. We cannot reconcile ourselves to God. I don't mean to depress you, but I mean to encourage you. You cannot reconcile yourself to God. Christ alone, 
Christ alone can do that for you. No, we rebelled. We didn't believe him. We wouldn't obey him in the garden till now. My mother was trying to <clears throat> remind me of some of those situations the other day. You know, she says she forgets an awful lot at 92, but there's an awful lot she still remembers. <laughs> I was a rebel when Christ came to me, all right? But, but I made this choice to sin against what? A holy and a righteous God. So, so I ought to be sobered by that. We are both the idolaters and the adulterers of this world. We have made this choice. And he says, I, through Christ, he made a payment. He took our place, and he offers us his peace. He took our sin, and he offers us salvation. He says, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he's committed to us, what? The word of reconciliation, the message. We are messengers with the message that God says, hey, if I've done this for you, then you can tell others about this because this is the work I'm doing. It's through you. See, second principle, God uses reconciled people as ambassadors to reconcile people to himself. I don't get to choose who comes. I get to choose who I speak to. And some come and some don't. I, I was sharing with, with my neighbor who just recently um, was at the hospital and while they were trying to slow down her heart, they, they did. They slowed it down to a stop. And that wasn't quite as far as they wanted to slow down to. And the interesting thing was of talking about them bringing this person back because she had a DNR. Um, but I guess when they stop you, you, they don't think that's right, so you have to bring them back. So the, they brought her back. And we, we were talking about the hope that she had because over a decade ago, I've, I've shared Christ with her. She, she's made this commitment. But as we are discussing this, Praise God, her, her daughter was also listening. And we were able to share this message. I, I don't know when people choose, but I know what the message is. See? And so, so God uses us who have been reconciled to him as ambassadors to reconcile people to himself. He says he's not counting their trespasses against them. <sighs> What is this world coming to? Has God gone soft on sin? No, he put his sin upon his son. And he punished it with a fury and a wrath that we'll never understand. We'll never understand. He hasn't gone soft on sin. He's not gone soft. But he is no longer putting on their account, holding their misdeeds against them, debiting people's offenses to their account because Jesus Christ paid it. All of it went on Christ. So wrath of God is coming for those who don't receive what he's provided. Are all saved? <laughs> no. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Without him there is no salvation. All right? And so, so we, we have a ministry and we have a message. I want you to understand this. You have a ministry, and you have a message. If you have believed this, God has something he wants to speak through you. You have been created a new creation in Christ to do what? To communicate Christ to others, to share that hope, share that trust. By trusting the Savior, there is forgiveness of sin. Has that gripped you? That, that he <laughs> has forgiven your sin. You know, I, I, I'm so glad he snatched me early. You know, my mother's prayers, my mother's reading scripture, the preacher's preaching. I was brought in, but, but where I was headed, even as a young man, I, I 
hate to see where I would be if he hadn't reconciled me to God, if he hadn't brought forgiveness to me. And so knowing that, I serve as his son. I'm bringing this message as his ambassador. I'm, I'm telling other people about this, that God appoints his reconciled sons to serve as what? As his ambassadors. I, I've been appointed to this task. I kind of understood this, but the more time I spend in the word, it began to grip me that if I believed what this word said, then how can I do anything else with my life? This is what it's all about. We are ambassadors for Christ. Amen? That is the truth. Now, what kind of ambassador you are is up to you and your work with the Holy Spirit. But you are, if you're in Christ, you are appointed an ambassador. Now, now ambassadors serve as, as this representative of the authority that they're coming behind. This nation, this king, the governors in, in Roman day, they, they were there to represent. They spoke what? What the king once spoke. That, that's what the job of the ambassadors is. It's not to say what they want to say. It's to say what he, he said. I said this. Interesting. Even his son, when he, was said, when he was here, said what? He says, I only speak the words that he gives me to speak. I, I'm totally submitted to that. So, so we're commissioned to represent Christ, all right, to, to exercise his authority, to offer forgiveness and reconciliation. When we come to this world that's at war with God and say, God wants to declare peace to you. Do you know some people at war with God? I do. I'm praying for them. I, I'm thankful for the, the, the reconciliation and the forgiveness that has gripped in my heart. But, but I want them to have it. Listen. Verse 21. Verse 20 and 21. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He says, we're pleading with others that, that God would do this work in them that he's done in us. Hey, would you... But you can't talk anybody into it. Have you ever noticed that? And by the way, you can't argue people into it either. You know, you can't fight people into the kingdom. If we could force people into the kingdom, I just would get better rope. You know, lasso them, drag them into church, preach the gospel, they're saved. Hallelujah. That's not how it works. He has to do that work. So I'm dependent upon him, but am I obedient to him? See, he's commissioned me as his ambassador. So am I going to beg? Am I willing to plead? I find oftentimes people don't represent the God that offers you grace. They're trying to tell people what a lousy, rotten sinner they are. I, I have found most people already know that. They may not admit it to you because of what they're expecting to receive from you, but, but there's a God who reconciles us to himself but he doesn't count our trespasses against us. That, that there's a hope. There's a message. And I want you thinking about this morning. Who are you saying? Maybe they've walked away. Have we not all at some point in our life? But, you know, be reconciled. To God. We are asking them to make a choice that there is something that we can do. There's someone that we can believe in that brings this reconciliation about. And I've had people tell me, don't you be talking. I used to work for this guy. Don't you be talking to me about your religion. He says, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about relationship. You're still talking about it. <laughs> I don't love you, I won't talk about it. If I love somebody, I, I don't care what their response is. is. Isn't that why we hesitate sometimes to speak about it? We hesitate sometimes to talk about it? What? Because of us. We're thinking about us. We're not thinking about them. If we're thinking about them, I could care less what they do to me. They may stand eternity with Christ. 
I don't care if they punch me in the face and throw me out of there. If they hear Christ. Listen. It says here in verse 21, he made him, he being the father, made him being Christ, his son, who knew no sin, nada, never ever entered his heart or his mind to rebel against his father, to do anything contrary to the will of God, anything less than love, never entered his mind. He knew no sin to be what? To be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He, he was not made a sinner, okay? Now, follow me. Why? Because he had to be the Lamb of God who, who takes away the sin of the world. If he became a sinner, he, he no longer can serve as a sacrifice. But he took on sin on himself, all right? He, he, was, the, he was as treated as though he'd rebelled against God, but he had never done that. He was not guilty, but he was punished as my substitute. It's the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. My sin was imputed on him. It was laid upon him as, as though it was true. It was accounted as though he was the sinner when it was me, when it was you, when it's those people that you're speaking to. It's already been accounted on Christ. So we're calling them to be reconciled to God. Because why? Because he redeems. He paid it all. What's it say? When, when does that transaction, what is our part in being reconciled to God? In Acts 10, the 43rd verse, they're preaching, and they're speaking about Christ. Would you read these words with me? And if, if you haven't believed this, this may be the most important word that you hear. Of him, read with me, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Whoa, 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 let's read that again. Of him, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin. It's not because they cleaned up their life. It's because he comes and cleans it. All right? He is the one who does this. Everyone who believes on Jesus Christ will be forgiven. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? I see some sinners who needed to be forgiven. Praise God, he's now made us saints, right? Saints who sin. We're, we're no longer just known as a sinner. We're this person who, who God's doing this work. But where are you at? Where are you at? Do you think yourself as good enough for God? If you compare yourself to others, say, hey, I'm not like that person or this person. That's, that's fine. That, that's good. There's a lot of rotten people out there. But if you're not as good as God is good, you're not good enough for God. Does that make sense? If you're not holy like God is holy, then you need him to do a work in your life. Then I need to come to him because I have rebelled. I have withdrawn from this account. I have overspent, overdrafted my life. And I needed a savior to save me. This sounds weird, but there is no salvation for those who don't sin. Because they don't need a savior. So you have to come to that place in your life where you have to bring, say, hey, there's a savior. So? And until he's brought you to the place of conviction that says, you are the wretched man. You are the person who needs to be saved. You're that person. Until he believes in it. And my question to you is, will you turn to him to be saved? Will, will, will you let him save you? Do you believe his death upon that cross is sufficient? See, if the son sacrificed himself, and the Savior offers you this gift. Is the Father going to re reject his son's sacrifice? No, they agreed from this before the foundation of the world. This was how it was going to be done. He forgives all who believe. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be 
Shall be. Shall be. It's not it might be, it could be. Whoever will call will be saved. So, so we have a message to give them. Whether they choose to believe it or not is not our responsibility. It's our responsibility to say, I am an ambassador here. The king has given me a job. I will speak it in this situation. And I want to speak it in such a way why? that he will do the work. Because everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Or if we confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Listen. If you've been saved, then you've been changed. And you've been changed, then you've been assigned. You've been assigned, then you have a purpose and responsibility. I don't care how old you are. I, I, I don't care how weak you are. Ray Abbott, he was laying there at Royal Gardens. His legs were no longer working. He was 94, and I'm talking to him about it, and he says, he says, well, this is not exactly the appointment that I wanted, but he says, I can still reach my Bibles, and he had Gospels of John with him right there. He, they come in, hey, they got to talk to me. <laughs> he, he was fulfilling his role as an ambassador, even though he was weak in his body and about to go home with Jesus. He was still doing that job. Listen, he wants to do his work. He made him, verse 21, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Not just that you'd be forgiven. See, see, that's pardoned. That, that's the, okay, what's, what's happened? We're, we're taking that away. But he said, I want you to, to embrace the full character of God. The rightness of God becomes a part of your life. It becomes a part of your lifestyle. You're no longer a pig in a pig pen. You're not just saved from a curse and made clean. You are now a son who is accepted, beloved, honored, called, gifted, indwelt, empowered. I can go on and on. He, he's done this for you. He's made you a new creation. He forgave you. He has plans for you because he's already appointed you as an ambassador. This, this is what we at Trump Prairie are supposed to be about. Isn't that right? That, that's what this is for. Because why in the world are we spending thousands upon thousands of dollars around the world? Because it says in Romans 10, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And then how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So we're bringing the word of Christ to our world. Why? Because he's doing a work of righteousness in us. He's done his work and he's continuing to conform us to Christ. Why? That we would live for him. And if you've been forgiven... And not, not forgiveness to be the mark of your life. I finished up with Ephesians 4, talking about the unity and the humility of how we walk with Christ. We're one body. We're one. That person, am I going to forgive? Am I going to be reconciled? Am I going to? I need to walk this out with him. And that means I don't hold that against my brother or my sister. I, I, I will... Believe what Christ paid for them is enough. I, I will reconcile with them. See, you are reconciled to be what? To be reconcilers. I find so many people, it's just like, hallelujah, me and Jesus, we're good. He put you in a family. And have you ever noticed families are weird? I mean, 
I'm not just talking about your Uncle Louie. I mean, everybody has a few in their family. And if you can't figure out who it is in your family that's weird, guess who they're talking about? <sighs> just saying. But listen, the idea is he, he reconciled you that you would be a reconciler, that you would practice this message, not just with those who don't know, but those who do know. It's, it's been the... The tragedy of the church is that the believer has not walked in the path of forgiveness with other believers. We're going to talk more in the days ahead, but it says that we are to be what? Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Hallelujah. Have you ever had believers really hurt your feelings? say nasty things about you, hey, let me sit down and tell you a story. No, I don't. I don't want to talk about that garbage, but I've had it happen. We've all had our wars in church. We, we've all had people who've done things that said they believe but didn't walk it out. But will we walk it out? Because we are forgiven people that we might what? Forgive those that we're around. And we'll talk more in the coming weeks, but following Jesus in correction. H how do you reconcile? Because you, you can't just pretend it hasn't happened. So the Bible tells us how to go through this process. But if we walk the walk, if we bear the message, then we have this hope to share with other people, this proclamation, be reconciled to God. Th that's the glory of this whole thing. Listen, you were made friends with God. Isn't that an amazing thing? To make friends for God. That he has reconciled you to himself, restoration of that right relationship, that you would be a person who would help invite somebody else. And there is no greater joy than when you see someone else come to be reconciled. You see that person, and you're thinking, oh, this person hasn't, 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 hasn't. That one has. I, I don't know about you, but that, that brings me hope. Now, the word and his promise brings me hope, but I like to see some fish come ashore. All right? You know what I'm talking about? You, you want to see that happen. Correction does not equal rejection. It's an invitation to be reconciled. And there's times when we talk to people, we, we have to speak to them about this truth. As I begin to pray about this, I'd ask, ask those who are serving communion that they would prepare the elements at this time. Father, we just want to thank you for the work that you've done in Jesus Christ. You've done this for us in Christ. You have placed us in Christ, and everything he has done has been a blessing to us. And now in Christ, we have all the spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. Everything is ours in Christ. And so we partake of this time together, remembering that his body was crucified for us. We're remembering that his blood was spilt out for us because we deserved that cross. We deserved condemnation, but he died in our place. He died for us. He died as us that we might be reconciled to you. And so I'm just thankful for those that you have reconciled to yourself in this process that you're doing. Let us, even as we wait for this, that just examine ourselves, that we would be faithful ambassadors for your glory. Amen. As the elements are served, we just would ask that you just 